with this national reckoning uh, that, you know, has, has dominated, I guess, um, in many ways, the public and political discourse this year, there's a profoundly unique opportunity to, to come together and take a united, strong stance on these issues. Currently, we've got eight jurisdictions with eight different sets of legal definitions. We've got eight different sets of punishments for differently worded offences. And these jurisdictional inconsistencies actually lend themselves to being exploited by perpetrators of sex crimes who are often aware of them and actually factor them into their calculated uh, behaviour and also their defences after the fact. Can for you example... Give us, yes, if you can give us an example, that would be great. Yeah, well, look, for example, um, one of the differently worded offences that we have is the persistent sexual abuse of a child, which in four jurisdictions uh, is worded as such, but in the other four jurisdictions that govern the issue of sexual assault is worded as, the, as maintaining a sexual relationship with a person under the age of 17, which does not reflect the gravity of the crime. Um, and it also lends itself to manipulation by the media, which uh, has been evidenced in the past, in my case, um, as one example, um, it, it lends itself to being manipulated and, and, and uh, to playing into victim blaming attitudes. Um, as well, we have you know different ages of consent and all of the provisions around that. So similar age defence, which applies for um, you know younger children who are in consensual relationships, who obviously we don't want to be criminalising, um, and then uh, reasonable belief defence, and then all of the punishments related to that, and they're all glaringly different. Um, now I. Not sure how many people are aware, but in 2017, the serial pedophile that abused me and others before me did an interview with an unregistered psychologist and a public commentator. And both of those parties in the interview actually capitalised on the use of the relationship to spin a completely false narrative. But interestingly, my abuser actually pointed out jurisdictional uh, inconsistencies in consent legislation, and he used it as a way of trivialising his crimes. Um, so the fact that we have these loopholes that still exist or these inconsistencies that still exist is quite concerning when you consider that there's eight different approaches to things. And so, Grace, what kind of a hearing did you get from Attorneys General today? And did you get a sense of whether consistency can be achieved? And if yes, in what time frame? Oh, look, I came away from that meeting feeling incredibly heard and hopeful um, that this broader ask of uh, consistency um, and collaboration on sexual assault legislation at a national level is achievable. Um, it is also, you know, it has to be said that harmonisation in any area of legislation is, is a very enormous undertaking. And um, sometimes, you know, there's a better benefit to federalism in that it creates competition. Um, and one of the things that, you know, it, that it's very clear that I don't want to happen is sacrificing progress just for the sake of consensus. So there's a lot of work to be done at the individual level. I'll be following up with the um, individual attorneys general throughout the, the next however long it will take um, to actually identify the specific areas that specific jurisdictions need to be targeting in order to reach the highest standard. So, for instance, um, in Queensland, uh, the definition of sexual intercourse actually uses the wording of carnal knowledge still, which is a really archaic term. It's actually a biblical reference. And that kind of hangover is particularly unhelpful. Um, and, and, you know, there are other examples throughout the eight jurisdictions and these different sets of uh, legislation. I guess what the aim is of, of, a, of a meeting like this and, an, and a call to action like this is getting the states and territories to come together and identify which are the best existing models of legislation in this area and rising to that level, rising to that standard. OK, so much has been said and written about the level of interaction you've had or haven't had with the federal government this year. But in terms of getting the legislation and prevention measures you want introduced actually through, is your relationship with the states and territories the key here? Most certainly. Um, and, and the federal government as well. I mean, um, that's how a democracy works, I suppose. You, 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 you stay critically engaged, you uh, give credit where credit is due, but you also call out injustice where you see it. Um, and it's a push-pull process. Um, I've met with 
seven of the attorney generals personally so far at the state level, um, as well as the federal attorney general. And today I had a chance to address all of the attorneys at once. Um, and like I said, the meeting was incredibly constructive. I felt very heard and I felt like the survivor community was heard as well. You know, the general public was heard because just in this last oh, five days or so since I've um, publicised my attendance at this meeting, I've been inundated with uh, messages from people who are calling for similar reforms um, and who really support this, this sort of national, this idea of a national framework a national collective collaborative approach to sexual assault legislation, which is an area in particular that calculated predators, um, you know, exploit loopholes in. You described this year as a national reckoning. As, as we near the end of 2021, do you have a sense that you will achieve personally what you set out to do when you were named Australian of the Year back in January? Oh, look, what was the most important thing to me to achieve and, and will always be the most important thing to me is empowering others. And I, um, you know, I... I stand on the shoulders of giants. I am in this position and was able to make the speech that I did because I have had support for a long time from people in this space who are still out there doing incredible work. You know, I knew that if I went out on that stage and said the things that a lot of people have been wanting to say for a very long time, you know, but for, for obvious reasons, you know, for the victim blaming culture that I cited before, um, you know, and, and, and corrupt forces that work against, you know, people like myself who, who, who um, call out hypocrisy um, at the highest level, who call out abuse of power. You know, I knew that if I went out there on that stage and said the things that I wanted to say, that regardless of the public response, um, you know, there would be support. Um, and, and what I always wanted was to transfer that private support, um, you know, and to be able to see it replicated in the public, to see the, the, the um, you know, the, the whole nation of Australia support the whole survivor community, you know, and that was done that night. And, and, and uh, you know, just to witness that was the, probably one of the most spectacular moments of my life to date. We see your commitment, Grace Tame. It's been terrific to talk to you. Thank you for talking to us about your really important meeting with the Attorneys General this afternoon. Thanks, Kirsten. It's been a pleasure. And if this story has raised any issues for you, you can get help by calling the National Sexual Assault and Family Violence Counselling Helpline 1800 RESPECT. That number 1800 73 7732.